Hello everyone, it's Elston here, and in this video we're going to have a go at doing stripes. Now I've found a method which works for me, it might not work for you, but I found this is a pretty easy way to replicate natural stripes. When I say natural stripes, I mean the kind of stripes that you would see on animals in nature, but this can be applied to fantasy and we can use some of the rules and bend some of the rules to our own advantages. We're going to start off just with a white piece of paper. I'll show you on paper first off and then I'll show you the application when it comes to models. We're going to use uh, simple black paint today just for simplicity's sake. And we're going to be use one of our broken toed large brushes. So. so there's a couple of things that we need to know about first when it comes to stripes. Now firstly, there's no straight lines. You might think there might be in some places, but I've not seen them yet. And if they are, they're only minutely straight for a very short period of time. So I would say no straight lines. Let's just get that out of the way off the bat. Second of all, there's two types of spine that you can run from. Now I'm going to explain what I mean by the term spine. Most animals are in nature semi round like this. They're kind of a cylinder. Most animals form this kind of shape with a body and a tail going to the end. So there is a point of a spine like so. Now there's two different ways I've seen it happen in nature. Now it it's up to you how you want to do it. Some are true, some are not true, but some have a line, some don't. Up to you which way you want to do it. Completely up to you. But just bear that in mind. So we're going to start off. We're going to start first off drawing one with a line. We're going to make this line a little bit thicker so that we know what we're working with here. Okay. So first point of call, we've got our line. Now there's three types of line that you can do effectively which is the easiest way to break it down uh, one is a singular line which looks like this just a singular line that comes off the spine okay the second is what I call a split where we come down like a singular and at some point we break off and it splits in two. And thirdly, we have isolated. Isolated don't connect to the spine. They're independent. Okay, so this looks kind of meh. Yeah, it's not very accurate right now. So let's put it into practice again with a few more and let's see what we can come up with. So we're gonna draw our line again. Okay, and now we're going to try a couple of different variations at different points in time. So we're going to start off with a singular. What you also want to do is try and get the tip to be the thinnest point. So that's usually where you flick off the end of your brush. Also as well, it's worth saying, try to avoid these sort of harsh angles if you're coming off a spine like that, they all tend to kind of blend in. So you might want to put curves into the attachments like that. So we started off with a singular. Now I'm going to put an isolated. I'm now going to put a, another singular. Also, it's worthwhile saying as well, if you see yourself copying a previous pattern, try to avoid it in some way. So in this case, I can see it's following this pattern, but I'm going to pull this round to a curve like that. So I don't follow the same pattern as this one. Also as well, you can bulk out these with 
a little bit more extra if you need to. So you can differentiate them just by the, the width of them. Now we're going to come in with a split like this. Then we'll come off with another isolated. Then another singular. Then we can do a split, but the split joins back up. And you could have an isolated one in there. You can also add small isolated lines in these points as well. And if you really want to, you can add a bit more going down here. So now we're starting to see our sort of lines come together. Okay. Now we're going to do one as if there's an imaginary line like this. So we're not actually going to put the line there. We're going to do it as if this is the right hand side. This is the left hand side. So we'll start from the middle though. Do singular. Isolated. We'll do a singular there. We'll do a split which comes from there which on this side will be like that and this side will just be a singular and we'll put no because that's mirroring that so we will put a split there and we'll follow this one round and tidy that up a little bit This is effectively nature, so we can do what we want here. Nature has a couple of rules, but nature also has randomness and that needs to be kind of understood for this. So let's just get a bit more paint. And let's do a couple more lines, let's sort of go opposite to ourselves. And we could do a split up top there as a small split. We could do a singular. Comes down like this. Then we could have one that tails with it as an isolated. We could have a small isolated one in there. And let's bring in another singular. So this is just basically drawing squiggly lines. There's just a couple of techniques which you can use to help you create this on your wargaming models. Now this doesn't have to actually just be applied to wargaming models. This is a just a rule you can use in art. Okay. I'll do a split that rejoins here. And then do something like this and let's do a couple of isolated or singular depending on the spine there and there and one more there Let's make that one a bit bigger. As I said, you can kind of bulk these out where you feel appropriate. The lesson I can strongly advise if you take any way, anything away from this is um, go have a look at nature itself. Nature will tell you what it's doing. 
so just go have a look at reference pictures i had a look at zebra or zebra 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 <laughs> whichever way got corrected on that the other day zebra zebra depends where you're from in the world and yeah yeah i learned a lot from it to the point where i understood that zebras stripes change directions as well they're not they don't just follow down the spine they actually change to going sideways as well and at one point towards the front they actually split in half and some go one way and some that go the other way so like this so it's relatively simple now if we were to take a sheet of paper fold it around We now have our stripe pans. Relatively easy. Doesn't take a lot. Just got to remember three types of stripe singular, split, and isolated. Okay, so that's how we do it on a piece of paper. Let's now go apply this to models. So let's try our hand at actually painting a zebra. Now, to paint this zebra, we're going to be using a model from the A Song of Ice and Fire game, and this is a Zorse Ride. Uh, it's also no, well, it's basically a zebra. So we're going to start off just by, we've primed it black, and we're going to do a zenithal highlight with white ink. This is just the easy way to get the white down. I've done videos on this sort of stuff before, so this is just a nice easy way to get a clear white coverage, and then we can just work on the stripes. I'm using a reference picture here, and I'm basically just copying what I saw on the picture of an actual zebra and and then copied it down onto this zebra it's worth taking your time we're obviously shrunk it down a fair amount now we're into much smaller territory so be careful if you do need to get a smaller brush um, have a bit of a play around with it try it out on the paper first off and then move on to the model it is different with the model as well because you're now working in 3d there's muscle structures there's highs and lows that you've got to account for so get used to it give it a try and if all else fails do what our good friend spray black studios does spray it black and start again as you can see as i mentioned earlier here that split that you see on the leg that is where the path of a zebra uh, changed into a different direction it's quite a strange thing i'm i think it's different on different zebras but it does change about a bit and now i'm just going to speed things up and let you just watch the entire thing as I paint all the stripes on this zebra and then hopefully at the end of it we'll have a very cool nice looking zebra. Be sure when you're painting stripes like this that your paint is thin enough to be able to cope with it. If your paint is too thick it will not go on smoothly and you'll have a much harder time. So if needs be use an ink, they're usually pretty good but just make sure your black is just nice and thin so that it will cover. If you do need to do two coats that's fine. Also, again, lesson learned, use reference material. That's the easiest way to get the best looking results. And here we have our final result. Nice and easy, nice and simple. Now let's work on something a bit more interesting. Lo and behold, the age of the dinosaur. It's not a dinosaur, it's a fantasy creature. This is a carnosaur from the Lizardman range. And we're going to be putting some stripes on this. Now the Lizardman carnosaur has a spine, which we're going to work on. And this spine gives us a nice interesting canvas to work on. Unlike the zebra beforehand, we now have a texture to deal with as well. So we've got to accommodate for that. I started off thinking about this and I realized those spines that go down the very middle, I, I was just going to paint them all in. I was going to paint in our spine on this one. I do find with sort of lizards and dinosaurs in question it is easier painting the spine in the colorings just seems a bit more natural with that it's not you don't have to do that i'll be intrigued to see if you didn't do that and if you do do this and do this on another uh, sort of creature of some kind i'll be interested to see the results but in this case i'm painting the spine in and then we're just going to work on all of the different stripes that we worked on before combinations of singular splits isolated Take your pick, basically. Work your way all the way down to the tail. Obviously, it goes without saying, as you get towards the tail, they get smaller. So, yeah, just accommodate for that where you've got a larger area. Extend the stripes where it gets smaller. Shrink them. Nice and easy. 
Now I had a plan with this Carnosaur as well that I was going to add colour into this so I wanted to start off with a darker tone so that's why I've come in with this dark brown here and we're going to be putting a colour over the top of this and then we're going to be doing a little bit of dry brushing just to add in the detail back of the scales. You don't have to do this, I think it just adds in a little bit more of a natural vibe to the stripes to show that they actually blend in with the creature itself. And here's a quick little bit, this is all we're doing here, is we could take some contrast paint, some orc flesh, and some contrast paint, athematic blue, and what I'm doing is plonking down the orc flesh and then putting on the athematic blue on the top and letting that sort of dilute it and just flow down the model. So it's, it's a weird way of diluting. Usually you might use water and blend it out. But in this case, I'm using a different contrast paint to actually just dilute the top part. So we get a kind of semi-transition between blue and green. This has nothing to do with stripes, by the way, right now. So this is just me showing you the rest of the dinosaur painting project because I wanted to. Whilst I'm in the dry brushing stage of doing the belly and the underside of things, I thought, you know what, let's try and blend this in by using the same colour that I'm using on the dry brush of the underside and do that on top of the model as well. So this ties all the colours together, the stripes are still there, they've now got some tone, they've got some variation, they blend into the model, it gives a more natural effect. You don't have to do this. Depending, if you're do just doing zebras, then that's fine, black will just suffice. However, if you're doing stuff with texture like this, we want that definition to stand out. So something like a contrast paint and then a dry brush over the top just adds all that detail back in and combines our stripes with other colours as well. Depends on the model you're working on. So have a bash, have a go, that's it. Stripes, nice and easy, three simple steps, singular, split, isolated. And this is what the finished product looks like. So blends in nice and naturally and it's relatively easy to pull off. So, until next time everyone, I hope you've liked the video, if you have, please hit the subscribe, the like button, all that jazz, and check out any of the other videos that I've got in the library if you're interested to see more painting tutorials. Uh, until that time, be good, be safe, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time.